Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your Conservative Member of Parliament for the brilliantly colored forested riding of Ranford Nipissing Pembroke. Last week, the head of Canada's military, the Chief of Defence Staff, issued an unprecedented order. It's being called the Reconstitution Order. This order is the first of its kind in Canadian history. It's because the situation in the military has become so dire under the Liberals. The military needs to be reconstituted. Between COVID and what they euphemistically refer to as culture change, our military is understaffed by over 10%. Decimation was a Roman term, which meant one in 10 legionnaires would be killed. Under Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Armed Forces has been decimated. The sweeping reconstitution order calls for the halt of non-essential activities and some essential activities, such as collective training. The order even acknowledges this will reduce our military readiness. Now, the chief would only issue this order if he thought the risks of not reconstituting outweighed the risks of not being ready. General Wayne Eyre should never have been forced to make this kind of choice. This is a direct result of Trudeau using the military as a first resort rather than a last resort whenever his lack of preparedness for an emergency culminated in a crisis. A more serious government would know such an order would have gone off like a hydrogen bomb amongst the elite. The media would have wall-to-war coverage. The entire forest would be felled to print all the hand-wringing op-eds. But this is not a serious government under the Liberals and their woke media allies. Instead, more ink was spilt over YouTube hashtags The Chief of Defence Staff issued an historic reconstitution order because the Canadian Armed Forces have been decimated. Not a single shot had to be fired by our enemies, and it's about to get worse. The only thing required to defeat our military was seven years of Trudeau. Cretchen and Martin gave us the decade of darkness, Trudeau and his NDP allies have given us a decade of decimation. Last week, during an appearance before the parliamentary committee tasked with reviewing Canada's medical assistance in dying law, a doctor representing the Quebec College of Physicians and Surgeons said the law should be expanded to include newborn babies with severe malformations and grave and severe syndromes for which their perspective perspective of survival is null. Medical assistance in dying is a a sensitive and emotional issue. Originally, the law was limited to adults with terminal illness, suffering from untreatable pain, where death was reasonably foreseeable. Now, thanks to one judge and the Liberals' refusal to appeal the judge's decision, Canada's laws have been opened stark wide. In the same week, Quebec's College of Physicians and Surgeons voiced its support for baby killing, the Liberals, NDP, and Bloc voted against a law protecting doctors from being forced to kill babies. Now, any doctor in Quebec who does not wish to euthanize disabled babies could face sanctions and the loss of their medical licenses. While a small number of countries have legalized medical assistance in dying, Canada is now seen as an extreme outlier Sadly, this should not come as a surprise to anyone. Tommy Douglas, founder of the NDP, supported euthanasia for Canadians living with disabilities. The cornerstone belief amongst the self-proclaimed progressives is social engineering. They believe the state can be built in such a way 
as to change the way you think and act. Euthanasia is just the progressive's way of removing those who cannot or will not be reshaped. More of the public inquiry into Trudeau's use of the Emergencies Act commences. The public inquiry is a mandatory requirement under the Emergencies Act. This mandatory requirement was just one of the ways the Emergencies Act was different from the War Measures Act. The inquiry had to be called within 30 days of lifting the emergency. Naturally, Trudeau waited the whole 30 days. When Trudeau finally did appoint the judge to oversee the inquiry, Trudeau also tried to influence the inquiry. Trudeau tried to make the inquiry all about the protesters and even suggested the inquiry investigate conservatives. Yesterday, the judge released the names of the witnesses who will be appearing before the inquiry. Justin made the list, along with Bill Blair, Marco Mendicino, Christia Freeland, Dominic LeBlanc, Anita Anand, Omar Algabra, and David Lametti. Sadly for Trudeau, no conservatives made the list. Despite Trudeau's attempt to rig the inquiry, the judge appears to be focused on the government and the use of the Emergencies Act. Here's a quote by the judge on yesterday's release of the witness list, quote, the commission is about to embark on a public phase, on the public phase of the process of finding answers to the questions assigned to it by Parliament under the Emergencies Act, end quote. The key words in that quote are by Parliament and under the Emergencies Act. The judge could have just as correctly said by government under the order and council issued April 25th, 2022. You see, it was the order in council, OIC for short, from April 25th, which established the public inquiry. The OIC lays out how the inquiry will operate. The OIC is dictated by Trudeau. The OIC called on the inquiry to look into the convoy organizers and the local police response. But the judge didn't cite the government or the OIC. The judge was clear. He will investigate the questions assigned by Parliament under the Emergencies Act. The judge doesn't mean this current Parliament. He's referring to the Parliament which passed the Emergencies Act back in the 1980s under Brian Mulroney. The Emergencies Act requires a public inquiry and it requires that the public inquiry to investigate the government, not the protesters, not the local police, the government. It is the Trudeau government which is being investigated. The Liberals and their media allies will try everything they can to distract the inquiry and the public. But rest assured, we're not going to let that happen. It's already been proven that the Liberals lied about the police asking for the Emergencies Act to be invoked. They lied about the money. They lied about the rape. They lied about the arson. They lied about the flags. They even lied about the harm the protest was having on local businesses. At every step, the Liberals lied and demonized. Now it's time for The Reckoning. Live from Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant.